best friend. We ended up staying overnight and then we didn't leave for two weeks. Um, I became part of the Direct Action Working Group. We became a pretty tight group. Um, so we had a meeting at my friend Ashley's house, about 30 people or so, kind of involved in carrying out the tactical plan. And while we were there, some cops had shown up at the apartment and they were like, what's going on in there? And we were like, none of your fucking business. <laughs> so, that was weird. <laughs> uh, later on that night, I take about three or four of the guys back to my house. They had been staying at my place. And uh, when we get back, I realized that I, or one of them, had drank all my roommate's instant coffee. And I was like, shit, I gotta go replace it. She's gonna be pissed, you know? So I decided to go out to the bodega. I go downstairs, I come outside, and I notice that there are two cops standing at my door. Well, I immediately close the door behind me because I don't want them going into my apartment. So I'm just looking at them, and I'm like, what's up? And they're like, we need to get into that building. And I say, okay, well, you need to call the supervisor. What do you need to get in the building for? I'm not letting you in. So I uh, go down to the store, I get the coffee, I come out, and now this is just my regular bodega on the corner. I come out, and I see that there's all of a sudden a cop van right there. And as I walk down the street, I notice that this cop van is following me. I walk down a couple more blocks and I see that the, the two cops are still standing at my door and this police van at this point is obviously following me. So I turn to them and I'm like, what's up guys, are you following me? Well, they don't answer me, they just turn the other way. I uh, arrive back at my apartment and the two cops are still there. The police van it, it finally drives away, but the two cops are still there. And I realize that I'm stuck in this dilemma, you know? Because if I open my door, they're just gonna come in. Now, there are only four units in my apartment building, all rented out to women, one an elderly woman, so I'm really concerned, you know? So, you know, I say to them, I'm like, well, is there something happening? Is somebody having a problem? And they're just like, no, 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 it's none of your business. We just need to get into that building. <laughs> I'm like, I know, but is there a situation going on? Like, if I go upstairs, is there a robber? Is there a rapist? Give me a hint, you're supposed to be the cops. <laughs> And they're just completely not cooperating with me, not answering any of my questions. And I'm just like, okay. And then they start, they start coming at me. They start getting close to me and, and up here. And I'm just, I start to get really nervous, you know, because I'm, I'm stuck here. My phone's inside and I'm stuck here on the street with these two cops who are just giving me complete shit about not opening my door. And I'm just like, look. I don't feel comfortable with two cops trying to enter my building, so why don't you just back off so I can go into my apartment? And it becomes a screaming match on the street, and finally, finally, they back off a little bit because they realize I'm getting really uncomfortable. And I'm just like, look, I'm gonna enter into my apartment, and you're gonna stay here, right? And they're like, yes, yes, we'll stay on the sidewalk. We'll call the supervisor. Okay, cool. So I go to go into my building, I turn around and close the door, and then all of a sudden, the one cop, the fat cop, just shoves his foot inside and pushes his way in. And it's just me and this cop, and we're stuck in between the door. And luckily at that point, I see the super walking by with his dog, and I'm just like, hey, you gotta come and deal with this, I'm not letting them in. And I tell the cops, I'm like, you know, that's a supervisor. And I'm just like, you know, they're trying to enter the building, they're not even asking for permission. Well. Finally, then the supervisor comes over and they start bickering, so I'm able to, you know, sneak away and go inside. What? Well, yeah, there have been, um, there have been a lot of incidences. Incidents of um, infiltration, you know? For, for me, it's just weird when they um, call me out by name. It's a bit weird. Um, there are a couple of cops that are over <coughs> somebody, and they see me and they're like, hey Sandy, how's it going? And I'm just like, wow, nobody knows me, what the hell? And it's just this, this constant mind fuck with them, always calling you out by name, it's always the cops, and sometimes it's new cops. So, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> um, I have a cousin, he's, a, he's an assistant, assistant district attorney down in the Bronx, and he, of course, never comes down to the park. Um, but he came down one morning on a whim, because he had the day off, and uh, 
me and him, we go get some coffee, and I'm standing at a phone booth on Liberty, and I'm like, all right, well, you know, I'll give you a tour, come on. We go into the park, and we're standing at the top of the stairs, and he stops, and he's like, oh, I've got to go. And I'm like, what? And he says to me, there are undercover cops right now in the park. They're over there, they're waving signs and banners. He didn't point them out, but yeah, he was just like, I gotta go. I guess he was uh, afraid he was gonna blow somebody's cover or lose his job, but I don't know. It's, he just like, I gotta go, I gotta go. And I, I'm just like, well, who are they? Tell me where. And he just, ah, I gotta go, I gotta go, and he leaves. So, yeah, yeah. I know for a fact that they were down there. I'm out of here. <laughs>